they will keep you for two reasons awake. Number one, I cut my presentations by 10 slides, so they're gone. And secondly, because our, I have a similar accent as these wonderful, beautiful Austrians like Gerhard. And maybe some of you know also our former governor of um, California, and he had always his beautiful talk about he's not our Schwarzen Schnitzel, Schwarzenegger, he's Schwarzenegger, and everybody said how this name can be, become a world star. And he has proven that he is one of the Austrians that made really a big difference for our country. Uh, seven years ago, I was moving from uh, Vienna, Austria, with over 50 years, uh, and made the decision with my family because we had already, as you can see here on the slide, our, a big success. I'm coming from banking compliance, and we revolutionized uh, the banking industry by our solution. And that's a story in itself, and it was sold to Thomson and Reuters uh, many years ago. What we try to do is, as you can see here on the slide, and it was mentioned today, and I cannot go uh, out of time in what my heart is really longing for, for salespeople, because I'm a technical company, but we underneath have a real core vision to change something. And what we heard today, and this is what we also try to do with our uni pipeline universe that you can see here, is to educate salespeople. And educate means we have a knowledge platform where we are doing that and also an analog platform where we have meetings. But the point is why we believe that our sales is important to change because the buyer has changed. Uh, but it goes even further that salespeople have to change what we heard today about compassion, about empathy, about our respect, about all of that stuff. If salespeople who are around almost over... A, almost, are 800 million people around the world in sales-related jobs, if they would really live that, the sales and the world would be a different place. And that's why we believe strongly, what I'm speaking a little bit later on, that sales can make an impact. But it comes together that we need today, technology comes together with human beings and coming in one. I would even predict, I give you today a couple of predictions. And one of prediction is, if you like it or not, is that one day technology we will have on our body, very close, a chip. And it's coming very soon. If we want it or not, it, it's a reality. If you look here on the exponential crows that we are seeing today, so I'm a little bit, um, a couple of years before Tom Sickler born, I'm born 61. And when I was born, there was about 3.4 billion people on the earth. Right now, in my lifetime, it doubled, and it will grow, as long as I live, uh, even over to 10 billion people. But that's not the point. As you can see here, the exponential growth is in technology. We cannot predict what is coming. It's not any longer possible. It's over. Everything on every moment can something come new because there is so many collaborative knowledge as never before in society. That means our, the old change that where I was coming from, I was one of the first Apple dealers in Austria. Uh, there was a fight at that time in the 80s and 90s about Windows and Apple OS. This is a preference today. Nobody cares. If you go today to a company and you say, I want an Apple, Oh, no big deal. In my days, in the, in the 90s, mid-90s, and you were going to a corporate company, and, the real, uh, and you would say, I want to work with Apple, they would look at you. <laughs> Maybe some graphic people. Yeah? It's over. What, what is not over? The computer is over. The fight for the computer is over. It's a commodity. It's a preference. The operating system is a commodity. It's over. The browser, it's over. So the core question is, what is the next thing that is coming? And so we have some fights there over, and new fights are starting. The, the software wars that we had in the old days, open source against Microsoft is gone. You will see that in a second. Maybe some of you know that Tim Berners-Lee, who is the founder of the internet, has started a new project. It's an open source project called Solid. And why he started that? Because he believes that the web has shifted from its original purpose. And it's now time to make a change. 
We know that our, um, the security issues as two weeks ago or two and a half weeks ago with Facebook um, are, has changed also the landscape and we know all of the other things that are coming right now in regard of security. New fights are starting, some are gone. I made 10 years two predictions. In that book that I have here, um, or that I published uh, 10 years ago in Vienna, uh, the IT revolution, I make 10 theses, and one of the two theses was every company in the future, every company in the future will need to have a CIO or a CTO who is really demanding the business model. People were saying, oh, wow, can you imagine today a company without technology? Not possible. The second prediction was that I said open source will change everything, everything because the open source community has a driving force underneath. I was not knowing that at the same time, someone make also a prediction, and it's much bigger than mine, yeah, and has a much bigger impact on the world on the same year as I did. The founder, and we don't know even the name, and we don't know even if he exists or is an acronym, uh, was the person who wrote this little book. In the year 2008, this will really influence our world completely in the future. I'm speaking here of blockchain technology. And we are at the beginning of that, and I cannot out of time going what blockchain technology can do. So I made the prediction, um, open source is changing everything. Look at this. GitHub, uh, a couple months ago, I, was our, 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 I had our, an invitation to their DePaul University, and I was doing a speech uh, in front of their CPG leaders, uh, com consumer packaging companies. And uh, the interesting thing on that was, it was at that time we had 24 million programmers. This is not even a year ago with 65 or 64 million projects. Today, we have 28 million developers and we have 85 million projects. That means people are working collaborative around the world and constantly optimizing the code of little uh, components, we would call that in our technical terms. The interesting thing is I was fighting on the day when I was presenting my book, The IT Revolution, 10 years ago with Microsoft. I was on stage and I presented, and then there was the head corporate um, uh, officer uh, for PR from Microsoft, and they said, open source, no way. Look at this. This year, $7.5 billion they paid Microsoft for the biggest open source community in the world. World is changing. What that means, we will see. We will see how big substitution and mergers are coming. Think about of that here for a moment, yeah? The horses. If you would be in the horse business today, wow, good luck. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> you, you can sell a little bit, but you definitely cannot scale, yeah? And um, I know that that happens to another company that we all, I was growing up and I, I was doing that very often and it's our going out of business and they invented even the digital camera, yeah? And the next thing, who of you have a BlackBerry, please, raise your hands. I have a box full of them. <laughs> a box full of them. <laughs> so this is gone. Guys, this was a couple of years. Every manager in the US had the BlackBerry. So we don't know what's coming. Substitution, merger, technology, it's really. So it's a big challenge for the C-level. For every person who is in the C-level position is AI, a big change, and it's impacting a man. Security and privacy is definitely, blockchain technology, as I said, are, will change a lot. Uh, Internet of Things, definitely. Robotics, yeah? And this is what people don't, are probably haven't heard so much, is about cybernetics principle. Cybernetic principle was invented by Norbert Wiener in the MIT Institute. Our, our Ashby, who was a follower of our, our Norbert Wiener, was creating a term that we have implemented in our company in everything what we do, in everything what we do. Science, uh, cybernetics is the science, the science of simplification. Think about for you as a user a moment. You want to simplify complex things. But you see, as Steve Jobs once said, to make things simple, really simple, it's not easy. 
It's not coming uh, very, uh, very uh, immediately intuitive to the people. It's hard, hard work. So therefore, uh, we have to refocus. And here is my two predictions. Number one is um, nothing we can predict anymore in therefore what is coming. We don't know because there is so much. In. Second is, this is what we can predict is that the proclamation of customer in the center of everything is not enough. Why? Well, come on. If you have a company and you would say, are you customer centric? Every person would say that. Every person. Well, I don't want to uh, keep an airline right now down, but if you would say, is United Airlines customer centric? <laughs> to, to, to drag you maybe out of the plane if you don't, yeah? So uh, the, the thing is in the future, between proclamation and reality, the customer will be very ruthless and punish the people. So therefore, the CRM is in the center of everything. CRM is the operating system in the future. It's not, oh, CRM is a byproduct. No, CRM is the hub of everything. That's why we moved into CRM business. It's the only reason that we said we do that again and moving in this area. Because the CRM is having everything. How often you have experienced when you go shopping somewhere? Uh, I experience that every time. And I'm really a loyal customer, as most Austrians are. Um, we are loyal and relational people. We have that in our genes. I don't know why, but it is in our genes, yeah? So the point is, when you go to a company and or you have bought already, what you would expect? In the old days, in the real old days, we had these little shops. What happened? You step by, and I live in Los Angeles in the Palisades, and it's there. I experienced that. So I'm coming in a shop, and what they say, hey, good morning, Nicholas. You want these two bagels? He greets me. He knows what I want. And he's offering me maybe even something. That is exactly what you would expect. Would you agree? How many experienced that with other companies, really? Oh, come on, you go somewhere. I go every time when I'm flying. I have to every time put my data in, or when I rent a car. I have, I have one car I'm renting when I go overseas. I said to them, I'm here six years, four times a year. You should know already my name. They still have not in, my, in their system. Yeah, it's, you have two different addresses. Well, make double addresses. What is the issue? So it's the center. Well, there is another illusion. Look at this. This is from our, one of our, it's not really a competitor to us because it's a marketing automation tool, HubSpot. Uh, it's not really a sales tool and not a CRM at all. It's a marketing automation tool. But look at this. This is all the integrations that they have. So how you could say uh, an all-in-one solution is working. It's over. Forget that. Guys, look at this. It's getting even better. <laughs> um, this is the latest information that we have on their chief marketing tech. Um, and you cannot even read the, any longer the companies. You cannot even read the categories. We have right now 7,000 SaaS solutions out there. They're fighting with each other for market shares. And it's not easy, and it's really hard to compete. So are, is the brand building the important? Think about for that for a moment. Building effective and efficient processes is the future. Why? Because all of this has to work together. The best of breed is the future. All in one is that. It's gone. Believe me, it's over. Uh, when you buy that, it's never. Why? Because some can work, but the question is when you have too many applications, then the question is how you connect all these applications with each other. That's one of the issues. So therefore, you have to choose about, and what you really have to do is you have to build your tools around the processes instead of building processes around the tools. Think about me for a moment. How many companies building processes around key people? Do you think that's a smart thing to do? A process can never be around a person. Why? What happens if this person has an accident? What happens if the person gets sick? So you have to build processes that are scalable. They are in the future. And therefore, you need flows in that area. 
Uh, I will need, lead you a couple minutes in that area uh, to connectors and APIs, what that means are in the air. Maybe when you travel a lot, you have this experience as I have. Yeah? When you really fly a lot, I was recently at the airport in Sydney, and what I had to do was immediately to buy a connector. Why? Because they have a different power system there. When you fly to England, you have a different one. When you fly to Austria, you have a different one. So the same is a little bit in the old days with technology. I've tried to make it in that area so that everybody can relate to this. Yeah? Building connectors was the old day. Then the people were thinking, OK, building connectors is complicated. Let's build APIs, application processing interfaces, to build that in. And we did that, and so we created middleware that the people can connect with each other. We called it bridges. Yeah? And this, there are different platforms. Maybe from you, and some of them are, are familiar for you, like um, uh, Tipco Scribe or PySync or Sapir. Uh, it's more maybe well known in that area. So different platforms. But now we are moving in a new area. And that's my next prediction. So prediction number one, it's not predicting really what is coming. Second, CRM is the heart. Third one, we are predicting that we are going to general automation platforms. How, how many have ever heard about that? None. I'm trying to make it very unique and, I, uh, and, and, and easy to understand, and I cut out, as I said, 10, four, or 10, 10 slides. Yeah? So our general uh, application platform enables things that no one has been done before. You can do things. Secondly, they streamline processes, and are, they can flow between applications. That means general automation platforms can build from one application to another application automated processes. This is the future where we are heading. Why? Because you have maybe a CRM, maybe you have a ticketing system, a marketing automation tool, uh, maybe an HR tool, maybe you have your QuickBooks, whatever. What do you want? A seamless process, correct? Seamless, the data. Everything is about data in the future. Therefore, Salesforce made one of the biggest deals ever since they existed. Who knows about that? The whole Salesforce conference was last month about this. Um, and I have no problem uh, to promote here them because our, um, even we are competing with them in some areas, in many, in many areas. Uh, but the point is what they made, Salesforce bought a platform a general automation platform for $6.5 billion. This company made $80 million on revenue. $8 million to $6.5 billion. So the question is, why they did that? Because building APIs and integration is the future. I think he, um, I'm not speaking about why he did the deal and everything, this is a different topic and there are, it's not about public, but the point is he made a decision and bought something and our, I would agree that this is the future in which way it goes. And uh, the interesting thing, therefore, you have to organize your flow of data. Data is the future. The data about you. Here we have a friend, Chris. Uh, we want to know about Chris everything in the future. We want to know how many times he has been uh, attended this conference. We want to know uh, how often he has spoken here, and then we can offer him something special. It's all about data. And how we do that? Because data is the lifeblood of every organization, the flow of data between systems and people, both internal and ex external. You have to understand the data. You have to understand what is the difference in data hyper. And in, in our, in our hyper-competitive environment, um, the differentiation is who can con contact you on a database personal. Everything goes back to personal. Why? Because we are, there is so many people out there and at the end of the day, and that's the paradox in my opinion, you want to be connected on a personal level. Isn't that true? Would you agree? So the person wants to be connected. And well, this is another topic, and our, 
The topic, as we have heard, how you connect on a personal level. Here kicks in another thing, or maybe we have a couple minutes for that. So how to overcome that? How to overcome the silos that we have everywhere? The data flow, likes, it's like a cross-country journey sometimes. Yeah? It's so different. Like uh, delivering a package. You sit there and you're waiting and nothing happens in the company. So the processes are not efficient. Um, different parts of the journey doesn't even work. They don't sync. They don't sync with each other. So therefore, the revolutionizing backend is the important thing. As you can see here, the, the backend with the CRM and with closing the gap, that is where it's going. You need to have a flow of everything because the salesperson, when he's going right now to the customer, when he's in front of a customer, he needs to have all the data to address the customer, the prospect, personal. He has to have this data. He cannot have that all in front of him, or he cannot collect them. So in the future, he has to have all this data, especially when he's traveling a lot or when he's talking to a lot of people, that he immediately has the latest information at his fingertips and can address maybe, oh, I'm so sorry you had last week or last month this um, ticket where you had problems with our, with our application. I know you responded and we responded immediately and fixed the problem. I hope this was good for you. I hope we could serve you good. What is, what, when you come up with that, what the customer would say? Oh, you were awful. You were terrible. Come on. The person would say, thank you. You did a good job. So everything has to go together. Why in the media everybody was watching when United had this terrible accident? Because it was like for us crazy what happened on this plane. So the future goes in this direction. Collaboration with flexibility. Different system working seamless in collaboration. Collaboration is important to synchronize timely what is really on the data that happens every day, quickly and easy. But at the same time, you have to give the individual the flexibility to act on himself. You have to give him the, the right to make a decision and to say, you are in charge, but only if you have the flow of the data. Sometimes you sit there in many situations and you say that the person in front of you says, I'm sorry, I cannot do anything, I'm so sorry. And um, as a European, maybe you, are, you are accept my, um, my little criticism, yeah? my little criticism, <laughs> and I hope you take it or, or for, or in a good manner. Yeah? Or, how often you hear on the phone, oh, I'm so sorry, I apologize. Oh, I'm so sorry, I apologize. But this doesn't help me. It doesn't fix my problem. You see, today, if the people in the processes would not apologize and would say, oh, you had this issue in the bank. Oh my goodness, call some banks and they say, oh, I'm so sorry, you were waiting for 45 minutes. I apologize for that. And oh, I apologize, you cannot have that. And whatever, if they would have the, the power to make decisions. Why they cannot do that? Because they don't have the data. And then they have not the policies to the data to make the decision. And that's the future. Technology and people have to come together. And they have to come together to work together. We cannot live without them. And we have to live with them with intelligent. And with real intelligent, and therefore, we created our system. Our, our system is built on everything what you see here. In the middle, we really make the customer in the center of everything. Every feature, every feature is under the umbrella, as you see at the top, instant dynamic visualization. Why? Because when you instant dynamic visualize something, a picture is 60,000 times faster than a word. So a picture immediately gives you the information and you understand. The user experience has to be easy, adopting, and rapid. Therefore, you need ongoing, standing, responsive, responsive support and everything. And from an organizational point of view, 
are you want to reduce your cost. Why? Because you want to leverage your opportunities and you want to reduce your risk. That's where it's going in everything. Why? Because the margins, the margins really getting thinner. Who tells you that the margins getting bigger? Yeah, well, some try to make monopolies to get bigger margins, yeah? But I think we know monopolies don't work really in a free market society and then um, it will change. So summing up here, the USB for the future is technology and is people. People need very differently something that we as a vendor just have in the genetic code of our vision to help salespeople to make a difference. I strongly believe salespeople is the hardest and toughest job and is are undervalued, undereducated, underappreciated, and underpaid. There is only a short minority who is really getting good paid. And we have to be very, very honest to ourselves that uh, around 70% of all salespeople worldwide and even 35% are not even close to fulfill their quotas, are living under enormous pressure. Think a moment. If you go to a hospital and you are injured uh, and you go to a doctor and you have this injury of everything and you say, my arm is broken, can you help me? He would say yes. And then you say, well, if this is not healing correctly, I don't pay you. How often that happens to salespeople. Have you seen a judge who got rejected? A nurse? A doctor? A lawyer? A firefighter? Salespeople have 80% rejection rates. We hear that in the next um, talk, probably. You need to have an intrinsic power to understand that you have a contribution to society. And you don't believe that. But you are as important as everyone else, as a doctor, as a firefighter, as, uh, as everyone in that area. And what is your importance? You are creating wealth when you sell something. Both sides are winning. I always say to my people, a good deal hurt a little bit. A good deal hurt both sides. Then it's a good deal. If some side is only hurt, when, when only the, the buyer got hurt, he comes back to you. When the seller got hurt, he tries to get some money out of you in the future. So a good deal is hurting both sides a little bit. But when you create a good deal, what do you create? Wealth. And the second thing that you are creating with that, this is the amazing thing to me, is you creating what? You create, as the Austrian School of Economics has said, that's in 150 years. Schumpeter, the Hayek and all the brain minds that are out there in the world, you create peace. The first thing that happens when two countries go in war is what? Cutting the trades. Trade is producing peace. So salespeople are wealth creator and peace producer. Go out and do that, and the world will be different because you sell with empathy, with, with respect, with win to win. And then I think we will see a different world what we need all to make this planet more in this critical time. Um, and I'm turning almost in the two years 60, so I can say for my three children and for the others, I'm very worried to be very honest. We are in very critical times. And the critical times is about that people are standing up and really living for what they are, their calling is. We have to go there and do something. And technology can help us, but technology should be a supporter. That's the, uh, as a technology company, I just go to my customer and say, I can help you to have the best CRM in the world, but at the end of the day, your salespeople um, need also training in the mindset of doing the things with the respect and everything. You need training there too to bring them to the new area how salespeople should perceive and how they are doing their deals. I strongly believe if you would go to, to Harvard and you would say who could save the world and what we need that would come up with great concept, I strongly believe the most undervalued, unrespected, and undereducated and underpaid workforce in this world, sales, could make the difference in the future 
if we believe it and go out and do it. Because when you sell in that manner, what, I, what we have heard even in this day about empathy and everything, and we do that, we go out and do it, you go not home and beat your wife and your children. You will be a different person. Is it true? I wish you all the best, Our, and I have a couple of little folders here. If you're interested in the product too, I'm more than happy to hand it over later on to you. Thank you for listening. Thank you.